2,000 years ago, the Chinese people invented papermaking. Then Chinese painting was combined with the brush pen, which has an even longer history. Traditional Chinese painting is done using a brush pen dipped in ink and Chinese painting pigment, which is then painted onto specially made rice paper or silk, making it a unique, self-contained, globally recognized art form. More than 100 years ago, after being exposed to Western oil painting, several Chinese artists traveled to Europe to study. Lin Fun Mian is the best known of them. Unlike other painters, his works are in the Western style, but display even more characteristics of the Eastern style. Lin Fun Mian spent his whole life pursuing the artistic goal of combining Eastern and Western styles of painting. April 2014, in this grand building that was the China Pavilion during the Shanghai World Expo, an exhibition hall dedicated to Chinese painting, Master Lin Feng Mian opened to visitors from China and the world. On display are representative and characteristic works of Lin Feng Mian from different periods of his life. With a strong emphasis on compassion, he creatively merged artistic techniques and ideas from the East and the West, presenting a dreamlike and tangible world and a lonely charisma. A lone goose flies from grayish reed marshes. Graceful Eastern maidens show a sad and mysterious charm. Lin Feng Mian's work always has a hazy, poetic quality and a slight melancholy. They reflect emotions deep in the heart of the artist. These vibrant paintings, which have gone through wind and rain, explode with strong and resplendent vitality thanks to the passage of time. I was born in the unfortunate year of 1900. Lin Feng Mian, in his later years, often began his recollections with this sentence. In the year of 1900, the eight power allied forces, including soldiers of Britain, France, Germany, Russia, the United States, and Japan, captured Beijing and occupied the Forbidden City. Guangdong Province's Meizhou City is known as the hometown of overseas Chinese, and the capital of Hakka is a Hakka settlement. The Hakka are one of China's ethnic minorities. Many traveled from China to other countries. Lin Feng Mian was born in this slightly shabby house in Ge Guangling Village, 20 kilometers west of Meizhou City. Dun the name of their residence sounds scholarly, but the family was in fact very poor. The Lean family trade was stone masonry. Meijo is located in the mountains with rich stone deposits. Stone carving is an ancient tradition here. Lean Feng Mian's grandfather, Lean Wei Ren, was a craftsman, a poor working class man who lived a hand to mouth existence by carving stone. On November 23rd, 1900, in this shabby house, Lin Feng Mian encountered a fatal crisis shortly after he was born. He developed serious physical problems after birth. Worrying the family couldn't support the baby, his father, 
Lin Bo En, took him out of the house and was going to abandon him in the mountain behind the village. At this crucial moment, his mother rushed out of the door and grabbed the baby from her husband's arms. Lin Feng Mian's life was saved. In Lin Feng Mian's paintings, maidens are one of his most important subjects. In representative works from different periods throughout his life, images of quiet, beautiful, and sad women constantly appear. They seem to be expressing the same theme. Many researchers believe that he was expressing strong memories of his mother. Lin Feng Mian once described his mother as of medium height, a descendant of the hands in the mountains and local ethnic groups, the Miao and the Yao. She had a beautiful face and double fold eyelids. 后来我们看到了她的作品当中非常多的那种长长的头发和一些比较劳动妇女的那种形象,其实都是她妈妈的。Although she had beautiful long hair and a pretty face, she was not favored by the family. My mother's life was very hard. Father, and especially my step-grandmother, seemed to be bad to her. She was bullied from morning till night. Young Lin Feng Mian couldn't understand the reasons behind it. When Lin Feng Mian was five, his family sent him to a local school. A stonemason and a painter, his father taught him to imitate the famous mustard seed garden paintings. In this process, Lin Feng Mian received an enlightening education in traditional Chinese painting. However, such a happy life was soon completely destroyed by a tragedy. Although the Guo Gongling village was a remote mountain village, feudal ethics and rules prevailed. Lin Feng Mian's mother was from an ethnic minority in the mountains. In the local people's eyes, this wild woman was ignorant of ethical rules. The Lin family accepted her simply because they were so poor. When Lin Feng Mian was seven years old, his mother could no longer bear the indifference of her husband and mistreatment of his family. She ran off with a young worker from the village. This brought great shame on the Lin family. More than 10 days later, his mother was finally caught and brought back. She was beaten and tied up with oil poured all over her in front of the ancestral hall so she could be burned. Lin Feng Mian was locked in the house. He later recalled, I suddenly became insanely angry. I found a knife, rushed out of the door screaming to kill them, to kill all of them. I saw my mother with her hands down from afar. Many people grabbed me and took away my knife, keeping me from approaching her. Lin Feng Mian's aggressive behavior and desperate screaming saved his mother's life, but didn't keep her from being sent away. In the end, the family decided to sell this disgraced woman. Before she left, the mother and son hugged and cried disconsolately. They never heard from each other again. So Lin Xianzhen, 林先生一直到后来，到了杭州还做妈妈，花钱。但是他告诉我，那是肯定已经给人家卖掉了。Many of Lin Feng Mian's works are themed on myths and legends of the Lotus Lantern and Madame White Snake. He repeatedly depicted the same theme: save the mother from the mountain with an axe. Saving his mother was an untangled knot in his life. Lin Feng Mian's elderly grandfather was his last emotional support. They relied upon each other. Grandfather loves me and tells me to keep at his side all day, to hand him grinding chisels or hammers, to watch him engraving patterns on stone tablets. He also asks me to wear shoes less, 
and he himself remains barefooted regardless of the four seasons. He said, with strong feet, you can walk on all kinds of roads in the future. It was his grandfather's love of Lin Feng Mian that brought an unexpected turn in his unfortunate life. This is a lottery ticket issued in the Qing Dynasty in the early 20th century. The face value is only six copper coins. Over 100 years ago, when such novel things appeared in the remote countryside, even the sophisticated city folk were hesitant to try them. It is this ticket that completely changed an eight-year-old country boy's life. One day, Lin Feng Mian got a few coins from his poor grandfather. As members of an impoverished family, even the adults would not waste a single coin. Lin Feng Mian, however, was desperate to bet his life on these coins. Three days later, he won. In the late Qing dynasty, the income of a magistrate was only 40 to 50 silver tails per year. 1,000 silver tails were enough to buy a Western-style house with garden in Guangzhou City, the provincial capital. Meijo Middle School is a prestigious century-old school. Established in 1904, it's the alma mater of many outstanding students from Guangdong, Fujian, and other places. In 1915, 15 year old Lin Feng Mian met his first art teacher, Liang Boutong, here. The scholar who was good at calligraphy and painting led Lin to a new world of art. As Lin had learned painting from his father as a little boy, his mature painting skills received acclaim from Liang. He found that the student had a strong memory for images and was good at artistic creation. He often gave Lin Feng Mian 120 points. Leong said to the other students, if you paint as well as I, you get 100 points. But he paints better than I, so he gets 120 points for sure. While at school, Lin Feng Mian was amazed by the foreign books brought by his friends from Southeast Asia. These colorful and vivid Western-style illustrations in the books showed him the art of a different world, which he yearned for. As recalled by Lin Huen Zheng, a friend and classmate of Lin Feng Mian, in addition to painting, Lin Feng Mian was also fascinated by poetry, especially Tang Dynasty poetry. The two of them gathered a group of friends from the school and founded a poetry club. Traditional poems laid a solid foundation for Lin Feng Mian's profound knowledge of classical cultures and also endowed him with a rich imagination for his poetic creations. In the early 20th century, overseas study became increasingly popular among young Chinese students. In July 1919, Lin Feng Mian was hesitant about his future after graduation from the middle school. From a letter from his old friend Lin Wen Zheng in Shanghai, he learned of a work-study program in France and became ecstatic. Lin Feng Mian did not hesitate to take the 200 silver tails remaining from his lottery winnings and go to Shanghai alone. On December 25, 1919, 19-year-old Lin Feng Mian and Lin Wen Zheng boarded the cruise for France. 
fate can be magical. If not for his sheer luck at winning the lottery at age eight, we're not sure whether Lin Feng Mian would have ever become an esteemed artist. What is certain is that without those lottery winnings, poverty-stricken Lin would never have been able to finish middle school, let alone go to study in France. Maybe he would have become a stonemason like his grandfather and his father. Paris, the capital of France, exudes romantic appeal with its wealth of culture and art. The charm of Paris comes from its unique artistic roots, such as in the Latin Quarter on the left bank of the Seine, a legendary place of artistic creation. The National Higher Academy of Fine Arts in Paris, known by the acronym ENSBA at the end of the Bonaparte Road, has been leading the zeitgeist of the art world for 300 years. In September 1921, after a year's journey, Lin Feng Mian, a young man who had walked barefoot out of a rural mountain village, finally set foot in the world's top palace of art. Standing behind Lin Feng Mian are Lin Wen Zheng and Li Jin Fa, who would later become a master sculptor in China. The three young classmates from the Meijo Middle School came to study in France. With a common artistic ideal, they were destined to write an outstanding page in the history of modern Chinese art. One hundred years ago in Europe, the mainstream art of painting had transferred quietly from classical realism to impressionism and then to modernism Except for a few basic courses retained by some academies of fine arts, most artists had given up the classical art forms of realism and precise depiction to explore the free expression of subjective artistic concepts. When Lin Feng Mian came to Paris, Fauvist, Matisse, and Cubist, Picasso, had already won the recognition of French artists. They were the most popular stars of the time. With a passion to learn Western art, what path would Lin Feng Mian choose? In February 1920, Lin Feng Mien began to work while studying in France. He learned French in a middle school in Fontainebleau in the suburbs of Paris for one year, and then entered the Dijon Academy of Fine Arts. In the dean's office, Lin Feng Mien was enlightened in both Western modern art and Western thought. Significant changes have taken place in his understandings of art. Art is not copying the mustard seed garden paintings in his childhood or his favorite Western pictures in his youth, but fantastical imaginations and reflection. Lin Feng Mian's unique painting talents amazed the dean, who decided to create an opportunity for him. This is a student's registry of Fermond Corman Studio. He was the dean of ENSBA. Student number 1629 was Lin Feng Mian. His registration date was May 26th, 1921. Apart from Lin Feng Mian, Another Chinese student of the French academic master, Cormon, was the well-known Xu Bei Hong. Xu Bei Hong chose to study realistic classical painting techniques, while Lin Feng Mian walked on the path of modernism. Cormon might not expect at that time that the two of his students would have given such significant impacts on the future artistic development of their motherland. We look back at 
，迈向现在的步伐有多种道路，徐玉红的那个路也可以走，林梦梅的道路也可以走，两者是不违背、不相悖的，是应该是同是应该是同一个目标的，因为中国需要。有继承西方现代呃古典艺术的传统的徐悲鸿，把西方的古典艺术引进来，也有也应该有把西方现代艺术的这种理念和方法引进来的林风梅。林风梅 and was lucky. In the 1920s, long hours of rigid technical training was no longer required. To enter ENSBA, mainstream art was pursuing the free and personalized expression of subjective feelings by observing and emulating. Lin Feng Mian gradually learned the language of modernist painting. In Lin Feng Mian's works throughout his life. Influences of European modernist art forms, such as Post-Impressionism, Fauvism, and Cubism, are easily found. Also, his personal artistic style began to take shape during this period. A year later, when Lin Feng Mian showed his paintings to the dean, who had come to Paris specifically to visit him, he was severely criticized by his former teacher. You are Chinese. You have so many precious and excellent traditions in Chinese art. Why don't you learn it well? Go, go out of the academy to Oriental museums and ceramics museums, and dig into the rich treasure. The remarks suddenly woke up Lin Feng Mian from his self-indulgent fascination with naturalism. He began to turn his eyes to Chinese art, which encompasses thousands of years of tradition. In the museums, Lin Feng Mian saw for the first time in his life fine works of ancient Chinese ceramics and paintings. He was excited and awed by the charm of Chinese traditional art. Years later, he sighed. It's a shame to say that, as a Chinese painter, I began to learn Chinese traditional art when I was in a foreign country under the direction of a foreign teacher. Then he discovered. 这个学西洋的艺术固然要学，中国的艺术同样要学。那么他在这个时候开始起，就确立了这个中西融合创造艺术的这么一个思想。ENSBA is located in Paris, famous Latin Quarter. As the rent was low at the time, it attracted poor artists from all over the world. Li Feng Mian later described his life at the time. I stayed all day long in the studio with my friends, trying my best to create Western artworks and blend Chinese and Western art. In Paris, Lin Feng Mian also experienced a profound love story. The woman in this photo is Alice von Rode. Her heritage was of an Austrian aristocrat, but she was a German citizen. In 1923, Lin Feng Mian and his classmates visited Germany to sketch. As he exchanged currency at the bank, he encountered a female chemistry student who attended Berlin University and fell in love with her at first sight. In those days, Lin Feng Mian and Alice von Rode often visited museums and theaters in Berlin hand in hand, listening to Mozart, Beethoven, Schumann, and Mendelssohn. Their intense love led to marriage. Rhoda introduced Lin Feng Mian to European classical music, which became his lifelong hobby. In early 1924, Lin Feng Mian returned to Paris with his new wife. In the following year, Rhoda was pregnant. The young couple was full of expectations of their wonderful life to come. Yet nothing is as certain. As the unexpected, soon after delivery of the baby, Rhoda became seriously ill with a postpartum infection and died soon after. Not long after, their newborn succumbed as well. Lean was devastated. He lost his mother at seven, 
Now he had lost another woman central to his life. He had never expected that the stone carving craft he had learned when he was young would be used to make a tombstone for his deceased wife and child. Although Lin Feng Mian was still in the shadow of losing his wife, a year later, he married a classmate from the Dijon Academy of Fine Arts, a relationship arranged by Lin Huan Zheng and a few other friends. Her name was Alice Vatant. Although never divorced, in the long years to come, the couple spent more time away from each other than together. On May 21, 1924, the first Chinese art exhibition opened in the Palais du Rin on the Republic Square in Strasbourg. It was a sensation. Lin Feng Mian had the most paintings on display, including 14 oil paintings and 28 ink and color paintings, such as Serenity and Exploration. By this time, Lin Feng Mian had developed the ability to mix Chinese and Western styles of art based on Chinese classical art and European modernist art. He was referred to by the French Oriental magazine as the first overseas Chinese student of fine arts. Lin Feng Mian's paintings attracted great interest from a man named Tai Yuan Pei. At this time, the leader in modern Chinese education was traveling in Strasbourg. A few days later, the Thai couple paid a special visit to Lin Feng Mian and invited him to return to China to serve as director of the National Art College in Beijing. Tai Yuan Pei stayed for three days in Lin Feng Mian's home and left 3,000 francs before leaving. This is Tai Yuan Pei. He wants Lin Feng Mian to be his 美术领域的代言，或者说他理想的一个具体实践者，蔡元培看中他的是他的这种纯，一个纯粹的人，而且他又有理想，他又有一种愤世嫉俗的对于艺术虔诚的追求。This is the famous Beijing Wang Fu Jing Street. Nearly 100 years ago. China's only national institution of fine arts, the National Art College, was located here. On March 5, 1926, 26-year-old Lin Feng Mian officially became the director. In Lin Feng Mian's mind, the National Art College would become an ENSBA in the East. He wanted to turn the college into a world-class institution with organizational and teaching systems similar to those found in European academies of fine arts. He was in the process of Cai Yuanpei's cultural history. Cai Yuanpei was the first to introduce a concept of the Chinese culture. That is, he brought the place of the Chinese culture to a certain extent. And he brought the Chinese culture in the Chinese culture. Unfortunately, at that time, different schools within the college, conservative forces, and leftist groups refused to work with each other. Several directors had already resigned. Upon returning to China, Lin Feng Mian was ambitious. He promoted reforms as he assumed office and put forward his idea of combining the Chinese and Western styles of art in an article entitled on the future of Eastern and Western art. Chinese culture, has a Chinese Li Feng Mian invited Chai Bai Xu and French painter André Cladeau to teach oil painting. He hoped that Chai Bai Xu's traditional folk style and Cladeau's new impressionist style would inject fresh blood into Chinese painting education and cultivate a group of new students who practice his artistic ideal. On May the 11th, 1927, the Beijing Art Exhibition officially began in the National Art College. 
Following Clodot's advice, the exhibition was organized in the form of a French salon, which lifted the boundaries between Chinese and Western paintings. A mix of more than 2,000 works of art were on display. This was China's largest art exhibition with the most varied array of styles in history. Some of the artworks attacked and mocked society, which provoked the Beijing government, then under the rule of warlords. Liu Jua, the Minister of Education, publicly criticized the National Art College, claiming some students are from the left forces and the teaching is corrupted by naked female models. He blamed Lin Feng Mian and called him a red director. As a humble scholar with no idea of political trends, Lin Feng Mian argued strongly. Furious, Liu Jua claimed he was going to have him executed. Lin Feng Mian, at this time, was still promoting the kind of academic freedom found in French universities. He became the target of all factional conflicts on campus. Overnight, the new young director was under attack from all sides. In despair, Lin Feng Mian was forced to resign. When he received the job offer a year and a half earlier, Lin Feng Mian did not expect that he would end up so embarrassed in his career as a director after returning home. This is the China Academy of Art in Hangzhou City. Its predecessor was the National Academy of Art, founded in 1928. Its name changed several times in the long years, but people familiar with its history often call it Hangzhou Academy. It's China's first comprehensive national art institute, founded by Tai Yuan Pei. The first director was Lin Feng Mian, who had just resigned from Beijing. This time, he was once more pushed onto the stage of history by Tai Yuan Pei. On April 8, 1928, the newly established Hangzhou Academy held an opening ceremony. Tai Yuan Pei attended in person. In the evening, Tai Yuan Pei canceled his room in a luxury hotel, persisted in staying in Lin Feng Mian's shabby dormitory. He meant to show how much he valued the artist, then not yet even 28 years old. He was going to make Lin Feng Mian a flag bearer of the new art movement. Lin Feng Mian once again became a practitioner of Tai's idea of free thinking and tolerance. He put forward a slogan, introduce Western art, organize Chinese art, mediate between Chinese and Western art, and create modern art. Lin Feng Mian began the most proud and comfortable decade in his life. This independent two-story building is Lin Feng Mian's former residence. It faces the West Lake and is very quiet behind the trees. It's in a French style, designed by Lin Feng Mian himself. On the ground floor, displays recount the master's life. Photos of the French hostess and their daughter still hang in eye-catching positions. The second floor is Lin Feng Mian's studio with a drawing table and a small bed. It still looks the same as in the 1930s. In his spare time, Lin Feng Mian created a number of excellent poetic paintings here. Outside the window, the breeze blows, sending shadows of trees dancing. Li Feng Mian once said, I am dreaming with eyes open. I actually paint the world in my dream.
During the 10 years as the director of the Hangzhou Academy, he put into practice his ideal of mediating between Chinese and Western art. To achieve this goal, he combined the departments of traditional Chinese painting and Western painting into one department, the Department of Painting. Under the direct tutelage of Lin Feng Mian, a large number of art students, such as Zhao Wu Ji, Zhu De Chun, Wu Guan Zhong, and Li Kuran began their journey to artistic success. During this period, Lin Feng Mian created many large oil paintings, such as humanity, sadness, death, human sufferings, and more. He explored how to blend Chinese and Western styles. The paintings have simple structures, thick strokes, intense and dignified colors. Zhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhuzhu
给他大概有这么大的一间屋，啊、嗯，他就是在那里，他可以一天画的最多的画八九十张。所以人家都说他那个时候是隐居了嘛，隐退了嘛。但是呢，实际上他还没有隐退，实际上他还在，就是花了更多的时间在，嗯，在在研究他自己的这个主张，就是中西融合究竟怎么融合。Lin Feng Mian was immersed in painting almost every day. As pigment and other materials were scarce, he no longer painted large oil paintings. He made do with things at hand. He cut drawing paper into smaller pieces. All kinds of pigments were mixed on the paintings. He was also very kind. In the time of the weather conditions, there was no paper, no oil paint. How do you paint? He was able to use the brush, and in that condition, he was able to paint. 我感觉到他那个时候拿什么纸画都无所谓，只要是画。It's from this period when painting materials were scarce that he formed his own unique style, the Feng Mian style. He began to paint cranes, the Jialing River, female nudes, and maidens. His paintings were warm and calm, bleak and liberal. Magnificent and lonesome. In 1946, after victory in the anti-Japanese war, Lin Feng Mian went back to Hangzhou with no luggage except for a few kilograms of unframed paintings. During the war, his villa became a barracks for the Japanese army. Some of his large oil paintings were ruined, with only a few pieces of canvas left. In the early 1950s, in order to demonstrate the new lives of working people and to celebrate the building of socialism, the new painting movement was begun. From Lin Feng Mian's point of view, this was consistent with his early artistic ideas. With an expectation of a new system, he eagerly took part in it. He went to the countryside to sketch repeatedly. He believed that his ideas could be transferred into realistic works. These works, however, were thought to be too self-expressive, inconsistent with the requirements of popularization and universalization. They were deemed as unrealistic and impractical. Lin Feng Mian resigned in desperation and depression. In the spring of 1951, he left his beloved West Lake and moved to Shanghai with his family. 他到五十年代画的那些渔民啊，那些油画，不代表他的水平，他是提倡现代的，和当时人们的审美趣味，和人们的认识水平，都有距离啊。所以这个是他走在前面的。反正走在前面的艺术家都是，都是命运，都是不是，不是很很幸运。Number 53 on the Nanchung Road in Shanghai was once Li Feng Mian's residence in Shanghai. He rented it for nearly 26 years. Li Feng Mian had settled in Shanghai, and although he had no regular income, he still had to support his family. Forced by the pressures of life, his wife, daughter, and son-in-law had to seek shelter with their relatives in Brazil. 55-year-old Lin Feng Mian was left alone. He dropped his lease on the ground floor and lived in the upstairs by selling small handicrafts and a collection of old records he had brought back from France. He lived like an ascetic, indifferent to the secular life, immersed in painting, and continued to explore the fusion of Chinese and Western art. A depressing haze looms over the grayish reed marshes. With a desire to survive, a goose sprints to cut the still water. 
Eastern and Western art merged in Lin Feng Mian's paintings, embodied through space and time by dramatic characters in extreme emotions, painted in intense colors. Flowers in full bloom are filled with the tension of life. Long-sleeved dancing maidens look elegant and somewhat lonely, reflecting the painter's compassionate expectations. Many scholars believe that during this period, Lin Feng Mian finally created his own unique features on the way of merging Chinese and Western styles of art. He reached an unprecedented height in art. Although loneliness, melancholy, and turbulence never left Lin Feng Mian for a moment, silent mountains and rivers still fly from his brush pens as if in a surreal dream. Tashin an international city, the world's third largest financial center. Lin Feng Mian spent his last 14 years of life here. To Lin Feng Mian, Hong Kong was the last trace of warmth in his turbulent life. Lin Feng Mian finally completed his mission of mediating between Chinese and Western arts in this Chinese city with strong European features After 1977, 78-year-old Lin Feng Mian went to Brazil with the help of his schoolmate, Ye Jianying, for a family reunion. But he returned to Hong Kong alone only two months later. in 1977, Nathan Road, Kowloon. When Lin Feng Mian came to Hong Kong, he lived in the top floor of a warehouse on this road. As in Shanghai, he lived a secluded life. To make a living, he was devoted to painting. It was not until his foster daughter, Feng Ye, came to Hong Kong that finally there was someone to take care of him. Although he was relatively poor, he had found the freedom of expression in his artistic creation. The old man, through the vicissitudes of life, could finally pursue pure art at the end of his lonely life. On August 12, 1991, Lin Feng Mian died of complications from heart disease and pneumonia in the Gong An Hospital in Hong Kong at the age of 91. Before death, he took a pen and wrote a few words, I want to go home. Sadly, no one knows where he was referring to. Lin Feng Mian's mother died when he was a boy. His wife died when he was still a young man. He lived a lonely and unsettled life. Throughout his life, he knew tragedy, setbacks, difficulties, misunderstandings, frustrations, and sadness all too well. 
But when it comes to his paintings, they are graceful, bright, magnificent, calm, and optimistic. Life at times is like paintings, while paintings can reflect a person's life. Lin Feng Mian's paintings strongly contrast with his life. Maybe his life was decided when he won the lottery at age eight.